Hi, I'm director Kelsey Edwards, and uh, I directed the documentary feature, The Art of Making It. Being in the art world is like being Amish. It is like being in a small sectarian cult with its own belief systems and its own social practices and formations and its own social mores. Of course, can I take a picture of the avatar? <laughs> we talk in code. We dress a certain way. We're very identifiable to one another. But we are not an open field. They'll fly business class to England for $12,000 and refuse to buy an art truck unless it's going to go up in value. They're not fundamentally interested in supporting a young artist's career. What I think the art world needs to do is really look at the DNA of how these structures work, how we build our heroes. Very nice. So tell us a little bit about The Art of Making It. Uh, the Art of Making It is a documentary about what it, what it takes and what it means to be an emerging artist in American society and we follow a group of very interesting um, artists at pivotal moments in their careers and um, set their stories against the backdrop of an art world ecosystem where we speak with um, a myriad of voices from throughout the art world to kind of question whether or not the systems that we have in place as a society are working or not. <laughs> How did you get involved with the subject matter? What drew you to it to make a doc about it? Uh, I, I have been immersed in the art world my whole life. My father was a museum curator, and um, I've always had a passion specifically for emerging artists and living artists, and I've uh, worked as a curator myself. I actually um, am local here in the Hamptons. I, I live year-round in Quag, and I have a, um exhibition series here called Iron Gate East, where I, show, I do pop-ups and show emerging artists. And um, through connections in the art world, I was introduced to my producer, um, my training is in documentary filmmaking, but my films predictably tend to be about art and artists because that's my other passion. Very cool. And um, yeah, she and I connected over this, the idea of the this topic of this film and the rest is history. Nice. So uh, what's it like filming uh, on Long Island being from Quag? Uh, <laughs> and I know that uh, we're here at the Hamptons Film Festival and a, and a part of the sponsorship is from the Suffolk Film Commission, yeah. Suffolk County Film uh, Commission. Mm -hmm. What was your experience working, uh, working in this local environment? You know, it was really it was really interesting. We, the film first of all is, is shot all over the country. So our artists are from, you know, New York and Detroit and Los Angeles, and um, we, you know, flew to filmed in Santa Fe. I mean, we really traveled where we needed to to tell the story. Sure. Um, but we had just finished production when the pandemic hit, and so we. Um, you know, my producer has a home here in East Hampton, and so she and I were uh, throughout quarantine, you know, working with editors remotely, working with the, the material, and in a funny way, it's just so poetic and perfect to be premiering, having our world premiere at the Hamptons International Film right. Festival, because we really kind of made the film here. Yeah, you know? so this will kick off your uh, your festival tour, yes. so to say. Very nice. Well, uh, how does it feel to have it premiere here in the Hamptons? What are, what are the emotions you're feeling now? You're, you're you know, born and raised out here on the East End, and here you are on the East End. Well, not, not, not born and raised, I should oh. say. I'm, I'm, I'm raising my children on the East End, but I've, right. we've... Uh, I, I moved out um, uh, when my twins, who are now seven, were one. Uh -huh. So I've been here for six years. But you know, I've you know I'm a member of the PTA, and <laughs> we're in it to win it. So yeah, absolutely. Well, you're, you're being responsible in that regard, and congratulations. Thank on you. Raising your children. Um, so what what do you hope that audiences take away after they experience this documentary? What do you want them to feel after they've uh, sat through your, your project and then they leave? And then and what do they take home? Hopefully they take home a new appreciation for the work that goes into leading this kind of creative life, um, a deep understanding of why artists do what they do and the potential broader value to society, and hopefully more people feel empowered. I think the art world can be deliberately a very opaque and mysterious place, and by kind of lifting a curtain on that world, uh, hopefully people who aren't necessarily in the art world realize that there's plenty of room for everybody and they can and should get more involved. Nice. Um, we depend on that support. I'm very new to this world. It's been stressful and I don't know who to trust. Hoping for the best. 
there's very little support of artists who are emergent. Very few people are structurally saying, how do we make it a fairer and better system? It's not logical, it's not fair, and you may be one of the greatest living artists in the world and nobody knows it. I had my first New York solo show in May. I'm really excited about that. I can't remember the last time I signed a lease. I've gotten really good at being in a certain space for like a month, six months, three weeks. And I really shouldn't be carrying this around. I had to paint this wall black. A lot of the work that I make is made for black walls. I'm just kind of grateful to have the space right now, so. This is the first painting I made with transparency. I was trying to figure out a material that could do what I wanted to do, and I had some silk laying around, and this painting came to fruition after the Fernando Castile shooting in Minnesota. The only thing I could remember when watching that video was just him wearing this white shirt and just blood being everywhere. Okay, uh, where can audiences go to check out information about the film? The website, social media, Both. things like that? Okay. It's uh, theartofmakingitfilm.com, and that's a great place to learn about our upcoming, yet to be announced, New York City premiere. Hey, um, very nice. And uh, yeah, we have some fun news coming yeah. down the pike. Um, yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. And, and then uh, the Art of Making It Film is also our uh, Instagram account, and we post all the time. And um, yeah, ple nice. please tune in and follow us. In, in closing, <laughs> is there anything you'd like to say to the Hamptons Film Festival organization? Uh, yes. <laughs> I would just say um, thank you so much. I feel like I'm walking among giants here, and it's just such an honor and privilege. Um, especially having come here as a fan of films and as a fan of the festival and being an audience member and um, actually, you know, interestingly, we're having our world premiere at Guild Hall on Sunday and I, three, what, four years ago, that's actually where I saw my producer's last film for the first time was at Guild Hall and so in a funny way, it's come full circle you know, something of this film was born yeah, there, sure. and, and here we are, you know. It's magical how stuff like that happens. Yeah. Right? Well, then uh, the circle is now complete, yeah, exactly. and, and you're about to embark <laughs> on a wonderful uh, couple of days out here in the Hamptons for, for this film, and I want to thank you for taking the time to speak with us, and uh, hopefully people will be able to check out your film, The Art of the Making. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.